Man, this is 2021. Who even needs a desktop? Let's talk about it. Yo, what up YouTube? Crash Wilcox, and I certainly appreciate you guys checking out this review here. And today we are looking at the Asus ROG Strix G15 Advantage Edition. This is the all AMD laptop that just came out. So the way I'm hoping to go through this review here is I'm not gonna be overly like spec and benchmark heavy. The reason for that is if you're watching my review of this laptop, I imagine you've probably gone through a couple already. I, yeah, I, I know where I stand on the YouTube reviewer hierarchy, so I'm sure that you've seen reviews, you've seen benchmarks, and I think why you're here probably is because you, you're still intrigued by it, but maybe some of the benchmarks and that sort of thing have left you wanting a little bit. So. My goal here is to kind of give you my impressions of this laptop. This review's a little bit late because I was in the process of going through upgrading the RAM, which we'll talk about, and it took me a little while. I'll give you my reasons why it took me a little while to get there. And then just, I'm gonna kind of give you my pros, my cons. We'll go through a few benchmarks because I think it's worth seeing and then I'll kind of give you my last impressions at the end here about who I think this laptop is right for. So the first thing I want to talk about is just the negatives. So the big one, at least in the reviews that I've seen, apparently everybody just found out what, what a MUX switch is and that's apparently like a dividing line for people. Um, this laptop doesn't have a MUX switch, which, um, I guess for the people that are just learning about it, that's a big deal. And I guess it can be a big deal. Um, it essentially means that the the graphics are always going to be run through the integrated GPU, which limits a lot of the performance from the, uh, the 6800M GPU that's in this thing. So it does limit the performance there. And the next big thing I think as far as a negative person and this is a personal thing I'm not a fan of the way it looks really I think it's gaudy you know it's got the RGB strip down at the bottom the keys not a huge fan of it um, it's thick <laughs> Compa uh, comparatively you know to a lot of modern laptops it's fairly thick um, you know, I don't like the huge chin, not a big fan of necessarily the arms and the way that the screen opens, you know, the, it's got the huge, you know, ROG Strix logo on the back, the multicolored um, piece, which is replaceable. I threw the silver on because I think it's less gaudy <laughs> than the red that it comes with standard. But personally, I don't like the look of it. Um, all that much certainly not the ugliest laptop on the planet and looks are personal that's just something for me um, it's not overly light and portable you know it's I think around five pounds a little over five pounds so it's not the lightest laptop on the planet again compared to old you know gaming laptops you don't have a lot to complain about but this is 2021 and you know you can certainly find more ultra light you know ultra portable gaming laptops you can check out my review i'll have linked up here for the uh, acer predator triton 300 se that was a wonderful ultra portable gaming laptop but this is not that so that's some of the negatives what else don't i like about this thing hmm it doesn't have the greatest port selection i guess on the planet it's pretty good but you know like the uh the USB 
type A ports on here are 3.1 Gen 1, I believe. If I'm wrong, it'd be scrolling on the screen that I'm wrong, but I believe they're Gen 1, so they're not the fastest on the planet. Uh, you know, and that's all right. Oh, and then the last negative, get this out of the way, it doesn't have any sort of like Windows Hello feature. It doesn't have, you know, there's no webcam, so it doesn't have the facial recognition. There's no um, fingerprint reader on here, so you're kind of going back in time with the uh, having to just log in with a pin or whatever it happens to be. So that could be a negative, I guess. Oh, and then the last one, just kind of going in line with it not being ultra portable. The power brick is a beast. Um, so again, not the most portable laptop on the planet. So those are kind of the negatives. Um, and then some of the positives here on this laptop, which is I'm sure why you're here, you're convincing yourself. There's a lot of positives with this thing and there are, and that's why I bought it. I purchased this with my own money and very happy with it. So the first thing, obviously the reason why you're looking at it, the specs are outrageous in this thing. Um, Ryzen 9 5900 HX, you know, arguably the best laptop CPU you can buy right now. Um, and it's a monster. And not only is it a monster, it runs relatively cool and quiet and power efficient compared to an Intel alternative. So it's a monster. That GPU, um, the 6800M is, are, you know, it's trades blows with the, uh, the 30, uh, the RTX 3080, RTX 3070, it kind of falls in that range, wins some, loses some, but pretty strong performance there. Um, the screen is really nice. You know, it comes in well over 300 nits of brightness, which may be a negative or a positive for you guys. But again, that's where I think, and this is kind of more of a bigger point that I'd, I'd wanna make and I've wanted to make before. Benchmarks are sort of a blessing and a curse, especially you know today where you can get so many benchmarks that you kind of get lost into them. And you know, things like the screen brightness, you're like, ah, it's only 300 and some nits and you can see laptops like Dell XPS's that are well over 500 and you know, you kind of convince yourself like, oh man, it's not that bright of a screen. It's plenty bright. Like sure, you're not gonna be gaming midday outside, you know, if you live in Dallas, Texas, but you're not doing that with any laptop, even an XPS. So it's plenty bright. It's a 1080p panel which is perfectly fine. It 300 hertz is overkill for sure, but with so, with the specs that are in this and depending on the games you're playing, if you're a CSGO type player, you'll probably be able to take advantage of a lot of those hertz, you know? So it definitely has its place, but the screen's beautiful. It looks wonderful. Um, the trackpad on this thing is, surprisingly big for a gaming laptop and it's surprisingly nice i mean it feels really good it's very responsive um, the click is satisfying and uh, with that the keys the keyboard um, not the nicest keyboard on the planet obviously it's not a macbook you know it's not an xps but i like the keys they're spaced out well i prefer a number pad doesn't have a number pad um, not a big fan of making the WASD keys stand out in a different color. Again, I think that just adds to the gaudiness. But, you know, if you're a gamer, that's not a bad thing. Again, it, whatever, it is what it is. It doesn't bother me. I just, I wouldn't get it. You know, I wouldn't ask for it, basically. Um, the lighting is fine. Um, build quality. It's not the best, you know, it's plastic for the most part, but it feels, it feels fine. It actually feels quite smooth. Um, I didn't wipe it off on purpose. It's a fingerprint magnet, as you would guess from a, an all black kind of plastic laptop. Um, it is a fingerprint magnet, but 
that's just part of the, I guess, part of the, the business when you're dealing with all black laptops. Um, and then, as I mentioned, the port selection isn't the best, but the way that they have the ports laid out is a huge positive. So no ports on the right side, which most of the world is right-handed. I'm right-handed. But you got a couple of USB A's on the front, and then you go around to the back. And I am a big fan of tucking most of the ports in the back. That makes life a whole lot easier, I think. So big fan there, and they did well. So those are just kind of some of the aesthetic and build quality. I think it's done as well as you probably can. And then the last positive is the price, which is again, why I'm sure you're here. You know, I got this actually at the time there was a deal at Best Buy, so it was under 1600. I think I wound up paying like 1570 out the door for this. Um, which is, all, well, okay, 1570, but I would say, and I guess I kind of skipped over a negative, which is, is I'm sure you've seen the RAM. It comes in that by 16 configuration. So it's 16 gigs of RAM, but it's pretty slow RAM. So I would bake in upgrading the RAM to the actual price of this. So I would say you'd probably be looking more around 16, 1700 to get better RAM to take full advantage because it makes a difference 100%. And I upgraded, I went to 32 gigs, um, bought my RAM. I'll have a link down in the description to the RAM I bought. And okay, so I'm getting all screwed up here because this is another negative. So the reason this review took me so long to get out is because its BIOS uh, does not have an XMP profile in it. So I bought some RAM before, some like Team Group Thor, or Team Group Zeus, I, I guess it is, and 3200 megahertz. It only ran at 2667 in here um, because there's no XMP profile, so it wasn't completely compatible. So I had to send it back. Um, I ordered more RAM when it finally got here, threw it in from Crucial. It's running at 3200 megahertz and that is what kind of slowed up this review is just getting that RAM right. So be aware of that. There is no XMP profile in here. You know, the RAM is going to be pretty touchy. Not everything is compatible with it. I mean, it still ran for sure, but it just isn't going to run at its full potential. So that's the thing there. So I would bake in upgrading the RAM into the price of the laptop. So that's a negative there for sure. But once you add the new RAM in, certainly does the trick um, so that's that we're going to kind of jump into some of the benchmarks right now and then i'll come back sort of with my final thoughts here benchmarks it performs as you would expect given the specs awesome and then when you add in the new RAM even better um, substantially better so who do I think this laptop is for um, I don't think it's for everybody and that's why I opened the way I did you know who even needs a desktop anyways right and I think this laptop is perfect for somebody who needs a desktop replacement. Um, because if you're gonna, this, it's not ultra portable. The battery life isn't the best. Um, that MUX switch is pretty limiting when you start comparing it to hooking this thing up to an external monitor and bypassing that IGP, substantially more performance. 
Um, so this to me is perfect and that's how I use it. So if you see behind me, I have sort of my workstation computer upstairs and then this one sits downstairs on a separate monitor and it's utilized 98% of the time as a desktop. And in that role, it is amazing, um, especially given you know the availability of desktop components today, namely GPUs. This thing is a desktop, an eight core, 16 thread, awesome GPU. You can upgrade the RAM, which uh, you know obviously I talked about. I did. I put 32 gigs in here, but you also upgrade the SSDs, and I threw. I had an extra 512 gigabyte. Uh, SSD so I threw that in here so I got a terabyte of RAM or a terabyte of hard drive storage in here and all in all it runs really well it has the um, the armory crate software which works really well so 90% of the time when I'm just cruising on the internet I have it in silent mode and you can't really hear it and then when I want to go in game I'll throw on performance mode and it just works really well. The software is really intuitive. You can change all the lighting profiles. I typically have all the lights off when I'm using it as a desktop. So that's the way I typically run it. I hope you guys don't let the other reviews scare you off. Um, price to performance, what you get for the money here is incredible. Just it isn't going to be as good as it can be if you're using it as a strictly portable gaming laptop but you can see still great it's still very good i mean 70 plus fps in borderlands 3 is great for a laptop um it just gets a whole lot better when you change that ram out and hook it up to an external monitor so um, that's the review i'd love to hear from you guys if you got questions concerns about this anything i didn't cover i'll definitely go back over and cover those for you if i can but yeah, let me know. Um, drop a like and subscribe. I'd certainly appreciate that. That's all we got for you guys. God bless.